rough shot on everyone a couple years ago. Why did the camera move? <laughs> Just really loves what you've got to say right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping this in. Seriously. Oh, it's on like... Rough. He'll turn, give, Terry. Busting into the open field. There he goes. Jaden Terry Granville with an answer. Another Bulldog win. Give the Spurs fake. This in the backfield. Evading a man. Throws out of a tackle. Incomplete. Zeroes across the scoreboard. Harper Woods have won the state championship. Their first in school history. In unbelievable, thrilling fashion. We were built to drive, yeah. Fake handoff, guy up the middle, big hole, bursting over the 40, to the 45, 50, angling right at the 40, 35, 30, racing to the 25, 20, outside the numbers, 10, 5, touchdown, Muskegon, Makai Guy, 80 yards to the house. All right, we're back. This is the all-new Behind the Call podcast. It's most, I don't know what this show is going to be, but that's kind of the point of it. It's yeah. essentially, in the past, we do the tailgate report, and it would kind of be half Granville and half whatever else we wound up getting on, various rants and theses. <laughs> um, this is going to be that various rant show. It's going to normally be kind of a little unscripted, especially if we're doing a game, a West Shore game of the week. Um, it's going to break down that game in particular. Maybe we'll get some interviews. I don't quite know what the plan mm. uh, for it is. It's mostly just going to be a chance for us to to talk. So, so yeah, we're back. Um, as I said yesterday on on Dog Pod, so um, I'm really excited about this year. First off, as you may have known, the branding everywhere has changed, and there was kind of you know like, we kind of upped our partnership. There's some things behind the scenes that you you all probably won't even necessarily recognize, but changes pretty significantly for, for, for me at least, uh, you a little bit as well uh, in terms of how we operate and upping that partnership with Michigan Sports Radio um, on the back end on some things. But obviously, uh, we had a opportunity to replace everything we owned. <laughs> um, would I suggest every, anyone goes this route to replace everything they own? Probably not. <laughs> Now, I love the car I got now. Okay. Great car that I replaced it with. Now. There's the positive outlook, Nate, and everybody and, knows. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If, if nothing else, I'm always positive. Uh, so the new gear. Obviously, so these wireless mics will be neat. Uh, we're going to be able to do some cool things. Uh, you know, pregame shows down, uh, as far as you all know, live on the field, but maybe pre-recorded to actually be able to edit it into the show, but close enough. So we'll be able to do some stuff, some kind of cooler stuff. You've already seen some of the interview stuff and, and whatever else, but new everything, kind of new banners, uh, new ways of doing things. We've, of course, we're nothing if we're not innovating different crazy ideas. Um, so, you know, we're going to have, you know, the the standard for a in-stadium sign has been a banner that you hang, but I thought, what if there's a better way? So we have this really obnoxious A-frame sign that we're going to be putting with all our information. There we go. In in uh, in midways at at the uh, stuff and new banners, the the soundboard that we've wanted for like two years. We finally have the updated one that's got some cool features and the the computer. I think I said this. The computer is literally about the only thing I own that survived. <laughs> so it was under my bed, and it was about the only thing. Apparently, those stupid neoprene sleeves are like completely water resistant to fire hoses they work who would have thought <laughs> so the computer's still good it smelled for a while okay uh, but we we worked the smoke out of it um i have some mgn clothes that i'll continue to wear on this show from time to time uh i'll just smell like i smoke several packs of marlboros a day <laughs> i i don't that's why i sound like a mouse um so yeah no it'll be no, i know i'm i am very I am excited. This is my opening soliloquy. So if you need a break in, please, please do. No, I'm gonna I, let you this go. Is, uh, 
let me rephrase that. If you feel the need to stop me, please stop okay. me. Okay. Um, you know, I think it was obviously daunting to kind of look at, and then exciting, but daunting first to kind of look at, all right, well, we got to reset everything. Um, but we did, and it's it's going to be great for everyone out there, for sure. Um, you know, it also was, you know, like I said, with the, the MSR partnership, there, was some, there were definitely some times, and with the amount of, I've been really blessed this summer, I've gotten some kind of cool racing stuff, and that's... Th- there was a thought of what does this actually look like coming back and does the Michigan game night brand as we know it survive in this new year or does it merge more or does whatever, you know, I think there's, you all picked up the drift that there was some BS and some politics behind the scenes and covering West Michigan high school sports that I think are only going to get worse going ahead I'll leave it there. Sure. Um, <laughs> regardless, we are so excited. It's going to be a great year. The The schedule we have, you've all seen it. Um, I built that ridiculous Monopoly graphic that took way, like, you want to talk about not making, like, not want to look at the dollars per hour or whatever on, on whatever the return on that stupid graphic, which looked so simple, but yeah, that was dumb. It uh, looked cool. It looked great. It yeah, was no, neat. I, can't, I can't give it, it anything neat. more than that. And but. then also, like, we released it, and then I immediately got, like, other co- like the schedule might change like i don't think it's going to now i think we're good now but like it was one of those things i've released it probably two weeks too early okay. which i knew was going to happen yeah all right i want to talk about some football let's do it okay i'll stop talking we're excited and we have a schedule that's um we're going to be um at a lot of these feature games, we'll kind of be the only show in town, I think, too. So we'll, nice. we'll have the opportunity to kind of provide coverage to what I think are really big games. Like, when there's a Muskegon Mona Shores, that press box is full. We mm-hmm. want to stay away from, from, from that and, and whatever. Well, we'll see. There's, I don't think we're going to be there. We'll see. But, like, that's, that's our planned Zeal and West Unity week. That's a huge game. Mm-hmm. That's two T teams, two Hall of Fame coaches, like, whatever. That's a great game, so we'll, we'll have a little bit of that. The Muskegon-Reese Puffer is an interesting game. So we, we really went out of our way to find, like, what are the games that, like, we're going to look back at the end of the year and say, that actually determined something, and maybe it was overlooked because everyone was looking at, obviously, Muskegon or Mona Shores or Muskegon-Byron Center or yeah. whatever else kind of on these more Lakeshore games. You know, West Ottawa, East Kent, well, that's going to be a super, super fun game <laughs> to do. We'll talk about that in just a second, our OK Red uh, preview. So, no, I, I'm really excited. And the Granville games we have in the schedule are great, too, and Every game, but I think the Jenison game and maybe the Grand Haven game are going to be covered on Michigan Sports Radio as well. Cool. Um, and I think one of those games are home games that the students will, will have or the huddle cam or whoever. I don't know what's going on. We'll have. So uh, that's all covered. Let's uh, let's get into it. So what we're going to do, we're going to go around each of the OK, which we have the cheat sheet because I don't know who's in what conference yeah, anymore. Yeah, that's going to take a minute. I'm not going to lie. That's going to take <laughs> a while. Thankfully, the red didn't change <laughs> yeah. uh, for football. Right. Um, so we're going to go through. We're going to pick our winner. We're going to pick our dark horse, and we're going to pick the MVP player. Okay. And then at the end, we'll do our uh, area, the preseason, the team coach and player of the year okay. awards. So we'll do that. So let's um get into it, shall we? Let's start with the OK Red. Rockford returns as the winner. The conference remains the same. Let's start with you, and let's start with your winner. Okay. This is. Uh... Or should we do it the other way around? Should we maybe do, let's change it. Oh. Let's do, let's maybe go because then the winner should, like I said, this is an unscripted show and it's going to be terrible radio. <laughs> Every, I don't know, it's, it's not radio though, it's a YouTube show. Yeah, it's, it's whatever. whatever. It's, yeah. good. it's terrible, whatever it is. Let's start with the MVP of the MVP. conference and then we'll do Dark Horse and then we'll do, we'll, we'll let's do it that way at least for this okay. one. If All I don't right. like how it flows, we'll change <laughs> then it. Then we'll completely flip it. All yeah. right. All right, so you still want me to go first here? Yeah, let's start with your MVP. Okay, my MVP. Uh, I have a feeling we're yep. thinking very similar here. Yes, I can. Uh, I can. No, I can we'll, give you we'll, a backup. If no, that's... Let, let, we listen. <laughs> like it doesn't matter. Now the thing is, we're right. Yes, that's that's ultimately he's it. the best running back in the state of Michigan. Right. So Jaden Terry. Jaden Terry, correct. Yes, that's yep. Exactly uh, what I was thinking. Caden Forbes at West Ottawa, great too. Okay. By Still, the way, yep. like as an underrated guy, and then you know, obviously there's a couple new. There's a couple quarterbacks, one coming up with his team, the other a transfer, um, at, at different schools. But yeah, I mean, I'll I'll let you I'll let you speak to him a little bit, Jaden. Yeah, no, I think uh, Mr. Tank. 
I think uh, we've we've sung his praises and have been able to see him up close and mm-hmm. personal uh, for a while now. And I think uh, there's no reason that that changes this season. I think he's in store for uh, another huge year. I think uh, you'll see some really big numbers once again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just hard to argue. I was going to, if you had started off, my backup plan was Caden Forbes as yeah. well. was going to be uh, just if I wanted to throw another name out there. But I think... Uh, I think on the surface, at least, it's it's pretty clear cut that uh, Jaden Terry is going to yep. be more than likely the MVP of this conference. Notre Dame and Maryland offers yes. also on um, on the table. So I know that uh, that now that gets that much more interesting. Now you've got or not offers visits. We'll yes. see what they come with offers. Right. Um, that gets that especially if the Notre Dame one yeah. hits. I know some in our audience are very interested in that. Yes. Um, so that will be uh, that. That's interesting. I mean, if he. Like if it now it's going to, and that's like, we were talking in the other show about how the stars a lot of times are impacted by who offers, not who you are. A lot of the times Mm -hmm. that's one of those, you get a Notre Dame or you get a whoever offer that star value goes up for sure. um, Just because you get that offer. So, uh, that'll be interesting. Uh, how about another Cade, uh, you had Caden Forbes. How about Cade Kaufman? The, and he's got D one offers. So he is, he was going to be the heir apparent. To Carson Viss at South Christian, of course, there's a new coaching staff coming in at Detroit King with new coordinators, and of course, sorry, at East Kentwood with from Detroit Tyrone East. Spencer from Detroit King comes in four-time state champions head coach once more as an assistant. Um, you know, of course, coach Dante Moore, so he brings the quarterback with him over. They have a lot of other talent. Um, they're they're the they're the X factor in this whole thing. They mm-hmm. could be where they were. They could be the best team in the conference immediately. Like I, I truly believe they could immediately be ready to go because of the level of coaching that that they have. They they ain't playing around no. at at East Kentwood, and that certainly is. Um, maybe it goes into a little bit of the next talking point here. Um, the dark horse. I'll start with the dark horse. Okay. For the fifteenth straight season, I'm picking Hudsonville. <laughs> <laughs> just the ride or die. <laughs> gotta gotta stick with it. Eventually, I, it's gonna hit. Right. I'm not picking them to win this year, <laughs> uh, because I think the top of the conference. We'll talk about this. I think is a little bit better. But if we are talking about a dark horse, that I wouldn't be surprised. They bring back the skill guys that run the team. We saw what they can be if they focus. If Coach Sandy keeps that team focused on being tougher than the team across from them and being the power run team, they were controlling that playoff game that they frankly should have won against Granville. Mm-hmm. That's a team that's going to win a lot of games in this conference, and even if they don't win it, they're going to screw someone or someone's season up. I'll let you react to Hudsonville and then make your dark horse. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, my reaction is that's that's a very on-brand pick, and I th- you have uh, logical reason Par for football. it. football. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, so I think... Um, no, I think I think that's a solid pick. I think just as an overview, this is just going to be kind of a, a blanket statement about the OK Red. And I mean, anytime going into a new season, everyone's optimistic, right? But I think the OK Red specifically this season feels oh. like... Top yeah. to bottom, everyone feels like they got better. We talk about I mean, Jenison. I mean, Jenison just added Chelsea's coach, Josh yeah. Lucas, who I talked to. They've like in that interview at like, media, they've like doubled the amount of kids in the program. Right. They're fired up. They're gonna have that like really neat that RPO offense. You might, I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. obviously, do you remember it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that RPO offense is a really neat thing that mm-hmm. they run. That's gonna be fascinating. It's like that's a college type offensive system. Like, it's you know, I think Grand Haven's more excited. Every other, you know, it's the red is. Yeah, going to be nastier than ever. No, for sure. So I think uh, in some sense, every team getting better uh, it just deserves a nomination there. But mm-hmm. um, my my dark horse pick, uh, this is this was tough because this maybe we're going to have to have our debate right now as to what qualifies a dark. Yeah, horse. Yeah, there were texts about this. Of yeah, we were going back and because forth because I figured he's going to like pick Rockford because they have a new quarterback. <laughs> See, I'm not quite that crazy. You may still call this crazy, but yeah. uh, my dark horse is Granville. I think that's okay. I think that's playing the audience well, which is normally my game. So yeah. I appreciate you We're for doing that. that out a little bit. Um, I might be okay with it because I think, I think there's probably one one favorite, and for good reason. Let's and this maybe links into the winner pick. I think. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be fair. Both of us are going to pick Rockford as the favorite because someone has to knock them off. Yes, and I'm not saying someone can't, but. The fact that they're as high as they're on their offensive line is scary. Mm-hmm. That's terrifying. I did say, though, one of my notes is I do have the winner of the Rockford-Granville game. 
will win oh. the conference. Okay. Week three. So, so you're kind of, yeah. I'll ride the fence a little bit, but no, I think that, uh, and they're excited about Braden Daniels too, their yeah. quarterback. They, he stepped in last year uh, when they had, uh, when Drake Irwin got, got hurt and they really liked him. I think, I think he's a little bit more of a pure passer, which would be interesting in a system that wants to be more run heavy, I think, this year. But uh, you, someone's got to beat him to knock him off the favorite pedestal. So yeah. I, I don't. I don't hate that. I think East Kentwood, of course, in there too. Caledonia's got a lot of question marks this year. They bring Betzer back, but they've got weapons everywhere else to replace. Mm-hmm. I had a terrific interview with Coach Pennington that's been lost to the to the decades because the audio didn't work as we were testing out the new mics. G- great interview. Yeah, like I'll take your word for terrific it. Terrific <laughs> interview. Trust me. Uh, so, yeah, that's the OK Red. Yep. So that's our look there. We'll kind of... That was probably our longest look at one. We'll kind of rapid fire a little bit through this. So the OK Green uh, is essentially last year's OK Green. You move out the Zealand schools, you bring in Byron Center. So you've got a co-winner from the white along with Muskegon, of course, um, and then Mona Shores, Reese Puffer there. Uh, let's start. Let's actually start because I think the MVP, maybe we should do MVP last because sometimes that gives away who you think is going to win the conference. It didn't okay. win the last, but I think in these some I, other ones it will. Yep. So let's start. Dark Horse, then winner. I told you we were going to change this. Dark Horse, <laughs> then winner, then MVP. Let's start with Dark Horse. And this, again, was one where I think it's... So I had to play the semantics game, and actually I wanted to pick my Dark Horse, but you're going to see why I'm not going to pick my Dark Horse in a minute. So based on the way I'm classifying things... I'm going to say Reese Puffer. Ooh, okay. Um, they replace a lot. I, again, talked to Coach Cater at that meeting today. I really like what he brings to the table. Um, and I think they have a chance to maybe steal a game or two. They're my dark horse. On a little bit of a semantics game, you're going to figure out why because I want to see who you pick for dark horse, and it may then begin to reveal my semantics of why I couldn't pick them. So okay. who do you have? So my dark horse, and this is, yeah, this is going to get interesting. I feel like we're having a debate Ms. here. Miss Keegan has a new quarterback. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spoil anything, uh, but uh, I've got Byron Center. No, that, okay, no, that doesn't. No, that that's not allowed. Okay. No, because they're well, like they're like more favored in like national state rankings or okay. should be than even well, Muskegon. That no, they okay. bring everyone back. They're well, rain, no. I can flip them if you want. So I don't mean this is spoiling my my champ pick here. No, I think there's I think there are two that's a tier. Okay, I think I think Dark Horse means it's like not like the favorite. It has to be kind of from that tier below. Okay, so you're. Not I thought you were going to pick Mona Shores. I won't. I mean, if I you're going to make me do that, like in the sense of a team that this is all screwed up. Now. Okay. So I was going to pick Mona Shores to win the whole thing. That's why I couldn't pick them okay. with my dark horse because they are a dark horse, but I have them winning the whole thing. And that's my biggest hot take of the day. Okay, there it is. No, so I, I go back and forth on my list here because I you're going to really... pick the team that went to the was like two plays from the state semis yeah. to be a Nobody's dark horse. Nobody's going to see it coming. It's going to be a great pick. <laughs> And then bring back every single skill position player in the whole offense? Yeah. Four-year starters? Yeah. That's a great pick. Okay, so he picks Byron Center as his dark horse. So, yes. Okay, so into the favorites, then you have Muskegon. I've got Muskegon winning. Good yes. pick. I have Mona Shores. So let's start with Muskegon because they're interesting mm-hmm. because, I don't know, this off. so we all know the ski gun offense. It's the pistol option. It's the whatever. So, But they've brought in James Young, the quarterback at North Muskegon, who's a pass-first guy. Like, is Muskegon going to air raid out of the ski gun this year? Like, what's it going to look like? Yeah. I, didn't. I Like, it, it, I am so excited to get, we won't see them until later in the year, but, like, I have no, like, yeah, they're Muskegon, and they bring back, and they have, like, the top rank, their sophomore defensive end is, like, the top ranked player in the state of Michigan for his class, and they'll have running backs galore, and they'll have this, and they'll have that, and whatever, but, like, they've got two D1 linemen, but, like, what? what what, like they've had these, they've had this line of quarterbacks that played running back or safety or whatever at the next at the highest level of the sport, really, mm-hmm. for like three straight quarterbacks, and now they say, oh no, we've got a passing guy in now, and they went out and got him too. Yeah, like, that's the interesting thing is, I mean, they definitely a guy they brought in and and feel like it's going to work. Yeah. I think that I mean it's not like a. And don't have a game plan for it kind of yep. thing. I think uh, that it'll be interesting to see. It's going to look different, no doubt. I think my reason for picking Muskegon to win the the conference over Byron Center is it's kind of along the same line of thinking with Rockford, where it's like they've they've yeah. just done it for so That's, long that 
I know they're regenerating a lot of that talent. They're Makai guy quarterback. They're losing basically the entire backfield that led them to a state championship. But it's kind of one of those things where they're going to bring talent. It might look a little different uh, you know, schematically and, and what they're going to run. I think it will, but it's kind of you just you trust that branding, you trust that coaching staff. To, they're going to they're going to do it again. And I think Byron Center as uh, my dark horse is one of the things where on paper they've got a lot of talent. They made a run themselves last year, but it's kind of they're going to be my dark horse until they prove that they can beat Muskegon and they'll get the chance to do that this year. I hope the internet, like I just hope the internet reacts properly to you picking Byron <laughs> center. So Mona Shores, if I may explain. So they have, I believe my favorite, including the great one that returns to Tungate and Alaska at Byron center. They have my favorite backfield duo with Jonathan Pittman to Marianne Stewart back. A lot of that offensive line and especially the big guys in the defensive line, Kruger and Taylor are back. Um, They've, you've got a retooled Muskegon, a Byron Center who's kind of jumping into this new conference, has to learn these two teams. I think Coach Koziak's as good as it gets. I think they're they're hungry, and I think they have in a conference of great quarterbacks. I think they have the best and the most tested one. I also, by the way, therefore have Jonathan Pittman as my my MVP. So that's my Muskegon pick. I get it's a hot take, but I and they should they could just probably count as a dark horse. But I I believe Ramona Shores. I do think Mona Shores, I think it's razor thin between those three, and it might be a three-way tie at the mm -hmm. end of the year. I like Mona Shores, though. I want to plant my flag early. Okay. MVP of the green. My MVP, you've got my uh, my second place. I was going above and beyond here, and I did okay. the second place. Jonathan Pittman was, was kind of my second. Uh, I'm going to go the Byron Center route. I'm going Lane and Tongate okay. as the MVP, I think. So got you've got... Muskegon winning still. Yes. But you're going to pick... I think the individual okay. performance and, and maybe the numbers at the end of the year. Okay. I think the MVP will be Landon Tungate. The, okay. I got a chance to see him in the the playoffs last year yep. and, and kind of see the dual threat that he is. I think got a chance to put up some big passing, some big rushing numbers. He's got uh, uh, some talented receivers that uh, he's very familiar with there that I think you're looking at a big season right. uh, at a Byron Center and Landon Tungate. All right. We'll kind of keep this moving from here on out. We have a... I mean, obviously it's a podcast. There's no hard out, but we do have a hard out on our own schedules recording this a little bit and otherwise we'll take 14 hours <laughs> yeah. so we'll, we'll try to keep it moving okay gold fhc the zealand south christian wyoming unity christian poor wyoming getting <laughs> stuck in this <laughs> um let's start with your dark horse okay i'm gonna get some hate for this one too okay because it's the same kind of concept as before if you pick zealand west well okay <laughs> You got they it. were a play away from beating them. My in thing the is though, like semis. My thing is though, like I if, think it's a tier. Yeah, but like it's like a, if they're not the favorite, then they have to be a dark horse. Like if you're not the favorite to win, that's a tier of dark horse. Okay. Where it's like, so is Oregon a dark horse pick to win the Big Ten this year? I mean, if you're considering Ohio State's the favorite, then yes. Is, okay, then is Ohio State the dark horse? I mean, if you think it's Oregon, then is Ohio no, State? No, I mean, I would say by consensus belief, then yeah, I'll call Oregon a dark horse. Okay. For the sake of this argument. Okay. <laughs> so my dark horse, because I'm going outside, I believe there's a tier of three teams that are the co-favorites to win this thing. Mm -hmm. So my dark horse who comes from outside of that is uh, the Unity Christian Crusaders. Okay. Because I think they bring back all the running backs, they bring back a lot of linemen. Talking to Coach Tibby at Media Day, he seems excited. He's now a Hall of Famer. I think Unity Christian's in good good shape with that. Now, who do you have winning the conference? I have South Christian. Okay, that's a good pick. Thank you. I think that's a great pick. The question is, they have a lot of pieces to replace. Yes. Uh, outside. Now, they bring the quarterback back, and they bring back Carson Viss, who is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So it might not matter. FHC, of course, has to return, re replace everything from pretty much every position plus the coach. So FHC, I think, is going to be, maybe they actually could almost be the one from this tier that could count as a dark horse. I think Zeeland West is going to win it. Ooh. Your dark horse. Yeah, again. that's good. <laughs> that's um, underdog story. I think Coach Shoto had a team that was so injured last year and still came essentially a play away from winning the state championship because they would have won that state championship. And they bring back some good pieces. They move. They lose some guys, and I think Slotot comes back. But they were so injured anyway that they're already playing the young guys that are up this year. I co I, I trust Coach Shuito. I think there's a lot of kind of like let's do it this year vibes around around that team. We're gonna see them a couple of times. 
South Christian, I think, is the favorite for good reason um, in that regard. But I I think when that T comes to town, I think South Christian's got a lot to replace from that team to be able to physically match a team like Zeeland West. Plus, plus they're, they're, they are two divisions smaller of mm-hmm. the school, or, or one division smaller. One one division smaller. What game did we do? We did the D four championship yes. last year. Yes, one division smaller. Um, yes. So, yes. Um, now with that said, I believe we'll probably have the same player of the year, Carson Viss. Correct. Yeah, I mean he's he's going to put up. They need him to put up ridiculous numbers this year. Mm-hmm. It, I think he's going to look a little bit like now. He did tell me in the interview. Amazing how many guys I I was able to talk yeah. to in this thing that we've gone over already. Um. I think he's gotten better at passing from the pocket and trusting his system a little bit. That could be huge. Mm-hmm. Um, but that performance he had at Ford Field last year was insane. So, no, this conference is... I, all of them so far are going to be so much fun. Mm-hmm. The OK White is going to be a little bit less fun. <laughs> uh, so, first off, you have... So, Forest Hills Eastern, Spring Lake, Wayland... Hamilton, Grand Rapids Christian, and West Catholic. So West Catholic, of course, the winner of the OK Blue last year, where a lot of these teams come from, teams like FHE move in. Um, I think we'll probably have the same dark horse on this one. Forest Hills Eastern? Yes. Okay, so obviously Ace Simonson, the, the terrific offensive lineman, Huge's son, uh, as everyone knows. I mean, he and he is actually terrific. That line is terrific. They're tough. They're nasty. They're going to win a lot of games. If there's a team that can maybe go in and push around the favorite, we both picked West Catholic, mm-hmm. um, that might be the one. The main thing with West Catholic, there's a quarterback duel. They have one kid that was already there, and they have one kid I think they brought in from Jackson Lumen Christie. Yes, I, I believe I saw that as well. Um, So that will be something to watch. They have a lot of talent up front. I think Landon Grove uh, talked about that. Um, by the way, all these teams... Uh, Michigan Sports Radio, I was a part of, we put together like a yearbook, like previews of every single team in the OK and the RCA, plus a few others. So a lot of the coaches got quotes and us and stuff. So go and read it on michigansportsradio.com. So if you want more info on these teams we're talking about. um, Player of the year, who do you got? So this was a a tough one because I was picking West Catholic as the champ, naturally. Uh, It's kind of the direction I was going was picking a team off the champ. Usually I've got an MVP. Uh, With that quarterback situation not being fully settled, uh, that's one of the reasons I went the direction I did here. I went for Stills Eastern, I think. Uh, you mentioned the the line being a strength mm-hmm. both offensively and defensively. I think uh, you mentioned Ace Simonson is one of the big names off there. But I'm going to go s- kind of that direction. I'm going Max Farrick. Okay. He's leading rusher yep. on yes. Forest Hills yep. Eastern. Yep. Play safety as well. I think when you've got a line that that's big, a good, that's no, that's a great pick. I think I think you're looking at big numbers there, whether it's strictly individual talent or just because he's running behind uh, some big guys on the line. Uh, but I think you're looking at maybe uh, again, they're just strictly based on numbers at the end of the season. You he can no, get top. That's a really good pick. Um, and again, West Catholic, like now I think they're going to play both quarterbacks a little bit, honestly. Um, so that's where it gets kind of tough to pick which one or the other. I'm going with the Reed Grimmer. Third-year starter at Spring Lake. Okay. They love the way Coach Mallory does. He runs the flex bone, and uh, I think he's going to take that offense to a, to a big-time level, and they have them both with his arm, with his legs being big. So Spring Lake team that maybe comes from behind, and I think they're probably the third-best team in that uh, in that conference this year, and I think he's going to put up some big, some big numbers. But kind of an interesting, like, a lot of teams that love their offensive lines more yeah. than anything, and kind of gets tough to pick which talent because they're going to spread the talent around. Um, and I'm going to go third year established quarterback at Spring Lake as as my pick. The OK Black reformed for for this year. EGR Grand Rapids Catholic Central comes over the champion of the gold last year. Do you remember that? Remember how you picked oh. South Christian went all year, and then <laughs> I picked Catholic Central. That's right. And Trying then Catholic to Central won a state championship. <laughs> And South Christian almost almost did, did yeah. <laughs> I mean, they lost to a team that wasn't wasn't a D four team, but was a D four team essentially <laughs> talent wise. Uh, Thorn Apple Kellogg, Northview, Ottawa Hills, Holland Christian. What a mix that is. Yeah. Um. The. We both picked Grand Rapids Catholic Central to win it. I'm sure. I think you have to. <laughs> yeah. So we both picked Grand Rapids Catholic Central to win it. Some of these, as we go, we don't have to. We don't. I mean, it's obvious they have to replace quarterback, running back. Right. They've got pieces to replace, but they've got. They're, they're GRCC. 
Um, so who's your dark horse then? This is this is an interesting one because just looking at the teams that you listed off there, it's like kind of like Jerry CC smacks you in the face like they have to win. Basically, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know, I don't know. I I have to hear the argument for anyone else to even kind of come close to winning that one. I guess mm-hmm. so. It's kind of hard, hard to pick a dark horse when you've got that heavy of a favorite in there. So this one I kind of went more uh, with the way you were going as far as a team that probably not going to win the conference, but maybe could be a frisky playoff mm-hmm. team slash borderline playoff team um i've got two actually uh i'll i'll give you one and see if you got the other i guess i'm going northview okay okay i think ryan oshnock ryan oshnock i think their team they've been building for a little bit i think uh they can be right around the playoffs again i think part of that is because you look at this conference and there's some teams that are i think for the most part going to be um closer to the bottom in terms of record and so i think there's maybe some more wins on that schedule for a northview team Mm -hmm. um I, th- I think you're looking at a playoff team there, and I th- then I think there's a clear team here. I've actually, got, I've uh, we'll see if you, you you list this one, but e- East Grand Rapids. Yes, I think I think they played some really tough games last year. They bring back a lot of that physicality. They ran that. They kind of ran two quarterbacks last year, and it like whatever they have a established one of those guys returning. Um, I think EGR is. I, I think they they kind of stand out. I think Holland Christian will be interesting. They can mm-hmm. put up points, but they lose a lot of pieces from that team last year. Um. No, I, I think, in my opinion in this one, I, I actually think EGR stands out from, from the crowd a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm not as high on Northview <laughs> as you. I think Northview might be the f- I think Northview might be fourth. Okay. Yeah, EGR was my other team. Uh, the only note I had here was they've got a tough schedule. They've got mm-hmm. uh, some difficult teams there, so doesn't mean they're not going to be yeah. in contention, but that was just the thing that separated it for me. But. All right, MVP. Um, I'm actually going, I'll start, I'm actually going a little bit in the depth a little bit, probably kind of third or fourth. I think. I think realm. Holland Christian quarterback Evan Aberger. Wow. We. Um. So we saw them play a game last year at the end of the year. So he's the coach's son, and this team is as close to the high school level you'll see as an air raid. Yeah. Like they will throw the ball fifty times a game. I think that game we did wasn't a boys like a perfect thirty six of thirty six mm-hmm. or something in that, that crazy, game. Crazy, yeah. And now the coach's son's throwing the ball around. So. I think in like the coach trusts him. I was looking at some quotes like likes what he does, and I think in a conference that I think is going to be a lot of teams that like Grand Rapids Catholic Central is trying to settle on like we're replacing a quarterback, we're replacing a running back, you know EGR again that you know kind of move going to a singular quarterback and whatever. I like the fact that you've got a guy that's like going into the year he's our quarterback and he's probably going to throw the ball flipping. Forty-five <laughs> times the game, uh-huh. and he's going to put up some Mike Leach type offensive yep. numbers from his quarterback. Like these, this is my Gardner Minshew pick. Like they okay. might finish fourth, <laughs> yes. but he's going to throw for an unbelievable amount of yards. Yeah, no, I'm, I've got the exact same name. Oh. so we uh, we're thinking the there exact same. I I was trying not to let that. Uh, last week of the regular season game that we covered against Unitrition. I don't know how they didn't win nine that's, games last year. I was trying year. not to let that like just completely uh, just take over on Unity. Was good. That's just and it. They just. <laughs> At will scored on them. They looked like they looked like Tennessee's offense the, when Tennessee's cooking with the veer and shoot. Like that was, was one ridiculous. of the best best offensive, like the most clean offense I've seen at high school for what they were doing at least yeah. uh, in terms of throwing the football around. It it was precision. That was yeah. we both looked at each other like how in the world did this team not win more games yeah. than what they did? And so I don't know if we saw they like, gave up thirty five points. They, well, that's also part <laughs> of it. But yeah, I think uh, there's a lot to be excited about there and and uh, the quarterback and. I think, you know, if you're looking for uh, a vague pick, I think you look at the GRCC, the the quarterback, running back. Once they get that settled in, I think that you're going to have big seasons there as well. But if you're looking for specific names, uh, I'm going Eberger as well. All right. We are going to drop a break in right now, come back to wrap up with uh, the last of our conferences and then our, our area picks. So we'll be right back on the other side of this. We are Centennial Securities. An independent firm with a team of committed professionals. Who strive to exceed our clients' expectations by giving outstanding service. We're proud to be part of our community where we live and work. Gear up this season with the MGN Shop. Featuring everything from t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats and outerwear, to water bottles, stickers and other accessories that help show off your style and your support of Game Night, the Granville Bulldogs, 
and more. To shop, click on the Shop Merch tab at the top of michigangamenight.com and browse nearly 50 items. And be sure to check in frequently as new items are added throughout the season. That's the MGN Shop through michigangamenight.com. Upgrade to Music Jams Premium to get uninterrupted listening on all your favorite tunes. Click here to start your seven-day free trial. If it's important, it's not worth compromising. Which is why with Farmers, you don't have to compromise quality to get great savings on your insurance. I got this. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Game Night is presented in part by Farmers Insurance, Bennett Center Agency, for all auto home, specialty, life, and commercial insurance. See what a center can do for you. All right, welcome back. Thanks, as always. Bennett Center, Farmers Insurance Agency, and oh, there's Centennial Securities, long time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Vanna. Uh, long time <laughs> supporters of MGN. They've both been with us for like almost a decade now. Oh, Bennett Center Agency, brand new for this year. Really excited to have Bennett and his agency uh, in Wyoming on board with us this year. Of course, the MGN shop. Uh, Chandler is showing it off. That's oh, a again. shirt. That's our new circle logo. That's a hat that's been on the, the shop for a year. Granville versus everybody, everything else. Uh, do what we can to try to keep those prices low. There is some pretty well-priced stuff, mm-hmm. like our T-shirts and whatever else that uh, you can find. So MGN shop through michigangamenight.com uh, and michigansportsradio.com slash MGN. couple conferences to go. One more in the OK, one uh, outside of the OKs, we've had to add on uh, this year to our main coverage uh, coverage area, the OK Silver. We've had a lot of fun with this one over the years. This has been our favorite uh, to pick. Um, <laughs> so the OK Silver, boy, this is a mix of teams. Mm-hmm. So Belding returned to the Silver Champion. Godwin Heights, Kelloggsville, Hopkins were all here before, correct? Mm-hmm. Fruitport comes in. Comstock Park comes in. They, were they the gold or were they in the silver? They were in the silver. They were in the silver, yes. The silver. Yeah. And then Holland, who is twice the size of every other school, <laughs> they practice across the street from uh, from where I live right, right now, temporarily. Uh, so they, they practice there. So I get to watch their practice. Got some insider so got, information there. Nope, not at all. Okay. <laughs> um, they're, they're out there trying hard. I'm sure. Okay, good. Note S- that. <laughs> um, Hopkins is my pick for the dark horse. Okay, they lost a lot of games last year, but they were very young and they had some injuries. They've kind of been the established team to come up. I think there's probably one or two teams in that top tier. Probably one team, honestly, in the mm-hmm. top tier of of favorites. Your Comstock Park, good as well. Who's your dark horse? I've got a uh, Comstock Park. Yep, but that's the, uh, that's the other pick. I'm yeah. glad we covered them both. Yep, I was, had the two list: Comstock Park, Hopkins. I feel like uh, you'll hear our champ pick here in a second. I'm assuming we've got the same thing, but I kind of feel like. Yeah. There's maybe these two teams that have a chance to compete, and then I think there's a pretty clear separation uh, between the rest. So I think these are kind of the two that maybe have a chance. The returning champs, Belding. Yep. Uh, we both picked them. You know, they, they bring a lot back. They bring, I think, pretty much the whole backfield back. So they run, uh, we've seen them play once before. They run a T, but they typically, Monty Price runs a T where he's got a split out wide receiver a lot of times, just a little bit different, t- like almost at all times. So it's mm-hmm. not like the T the that Unity and and Granville and Zealand and all the other schools, Cedar Springs, um, traditionally run. I think they're the pick. Then you get into um, the MVP from that, and they have a couple guys in the backfield I would feel comfortable picking. I'm going to go with Cody Manley. He's okay. kind of their long-range TD. I think he's kind of their Jaden Terry-type left running back typically guy that kind of is the home run hitter and, and puts up the numbers that way. He's... I think he plays both ways, but I think he'll probably be their highest touchdown and yard total guy on on the team that wins the conference. So I've got Cody Manley running back at Belding. Okay. I went with a different member of that backfield. Okay. I went Hunter Conrad. That's the other pick, I think, yeah. The, yep, the a little bit more a of the bruiser, kid. plays middle linebacker as well. So I think uh, yeah, just the, the contributions on both sides there mm-hmm. and uh, big physical style that kind of fits right into what Belding does. I, uh, that was my pick for MVP. No, that's that. Those are... The two picks, I think they're both um, they're both good in the OK Silver. I don't know the Rebels. All right. So the River City <laughs> Alliance forms this year and has a unique mix, and I think potentially grows in the future as well. We'll see. So Coopersville, Allendale, Greenville, Kenwood Hills, Lowell, and Sparta all together. Really interesting 
a mix of teams coming in here into this new conference. Um, I think, though, the picks are all going to be kind of straightforward. Okay. Dark Horse, Lowell. I went Cedar Springs. Oh, yeah, that's... Okay, yep. I didn't... Well, yeah, because I didn't say Cedar Springs when I okay. ran them through here. <laughs> yes, that's... Yeah, okay, yes. They're also there for sure. They are, yeah. They missed playoffs last year, but uh, have a lot of experience coming back. I think mm -hmm. looking at potentially a playoff team there. But. Lowell's the opposite. So Lowell this year is going to be a very young team, but I think they're going to be a little bit of a throwback to maybe some of the early Noldine teams. Um in which I think you're going to see them, based on what I've kind of heard from the coaching staff, I think they're going to be under center. They might even be eye form a little bit. They're going to be running the football a lot and physical with a young team and a lot of guys trying to find their role. So I, I like that. When you tell me that Lowell's going to be nasty and physical, my ears perk up. <laughs> because I'm like, which the, the weird thing about that, those, like those no D teams, like there were some of those teams that just threw the ball all over mm -hmm. the place. And then other teams, they would be just this very kind of power multiple running team. So I think this team goes back to a little bit of that mix where it's going to be a couple tight ends out of the, you know, when they do run shotgun, it might be a couple tight ends, pound the rock, under center a lot. I think they're going to be under center a lot. So I like Lowell as a little bit of a throwback team, obviously Cedar Springs is a throwback team yep. uh, as well. But there's a clear favorite. Yes. And it's Coopersville. Right. Mm -hmm. um, they bring a lot back. They bring back J.J. Hurtis, uh, J.J. Hurtis to now be their new leader on the offensive line um, after Gabe Van Sickle goes to Ohio State. Will be down in his territory. Um, I think he's actually been making some waves at practice. I've mm -hmm. even heard for for Ohio State. Um, okay. So, um, it'll be tough. They return a lot of talent as well, running back position and and so on and so forth. So, um, I don't know if you have more to add, but I think it's I think they're a pretty clear favorite. That I think they've they'll be in a good position with this schedule and some kind of younger teams around them to win. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, a team that's kind of established themselves over the last handful of years is, is being re really physical and uh, kind of dominating some teams after uh, a while of not having that success. And so I think they're kind of still uh, building or continuing that success that they've had. They've got uh, the names and, and some of that star power that they've had in, in years prior. So I think they probably continue on their run, uh, what's been pretty impressive. MVP. So I'm going with a pick that's actually kind of similar to my Howland Christian Aberger pick mm -hmm. a minute ago. I'm going Kenwa Hills, going Grayson Fellows. Okay. So Don Fellows is at Kenwa Hills now, and he brought his son with him. <laughs> well, there was a lot of movement. Grayson spent. He was going to actually be at Catholic Central for a while. I think mm -hmm. he was at Catholic Central. Then his dad winds up moving on to this job at Kenwood Hills and comes with. He is a very talented sophomore. Started last year at the start of the year at Union when his dad was at Union. A very talented kid as a sophomore. Throws the ball around, and I think they're going to throw the ball all around, and I think there are some interesting, especially speedy targets around him. So I've got the sophomore Grayson Fellows as the MVP of the Rebels Alliance. Okay. Or River Cities Alliance, whatever you may want to call it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my MVP, uh, you mentioned his name earlier. It's on uh, the championship or the projected championship team in Coopersville. Okay. JJ Hurtis. Pick the lineman. There you go. I picked the lineman. I had to give some I love like to it. the lineman. No, I, I, I love it. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we've picked a lot of the, the skill positions, pretty much primarily all skill positions or, or defensive players. And so we'll get the offensive line a little bit of love in there. And when you think of the, the physicality that's led Coopersville to mm -hmm. a lot of their success, and he's kind of the. Well, the I, face I love of that. that pick. So, no, that's, that's a very good pick. That's, that's actually, you know, I'm picking the flashy, like, yep. coach's son <laughs> quarterback to throw the ball 70 times a game. Yeah. You're picking the offensive tackle. Yeah, like, yeah, no, I, yeah it is for sure. Um, so, yeah, so that's the RCA. Um, of course, Michigan Sports Radio, we've got a Coopersville team that will have uh, all those games covered throughout the year. So uh, Broncos Radio and, I mean, 15-plus games a night are going to be on Michigan Sports Radio this season. So there's no more complete coverage you're going to find um, across the area. Um, for sure, and, uh, with the – you know the previews and everything else we've got going on too. I think we're taking it to a to an even new level at, at at MSR this year, and that's part of kind of our movement more towards them doing some cool things. Uh, I've been a part of uh, helping on some of that stuff. All right, let's wrap it up with our area awards, shall we? Mm hmm. Um. Okay. Let's. Um. 
let's get into this here. Let's start with, and I'll start with you, the team of the year in West Michigan. It was all said and done. What's the team that we look back at and say, that was the team of the year in West Michigan? The team of the year in West Michigan. For me, this was, I mean, there's definitely a couple teams, uh, a lot of the champions that we talked about, just going through the conferences, put them all together. I think there's there's two or three that kind of immediately separate themselves, and then it kind of gets tough from there. So I'm going to go, there's one that has, is a perennial powerhouse, uh, state championships for for years but i think i'm gonna go a different route this is this is gonna probably be uh frowned upon pick here but we'll we'll do it anyway so okay. i'm gonna take rockford they should that's a good pick i mean it's they're gonna be very very good this year and i think they've got a chance to make one of the deepest runs of, of any team i think we'll, we'll see how the playoffs line up but they should be there again and they'll they're the favorite to win the big the big team Big school conference. Mm-hmm. I think that's good. Um, I'm going to go with what I feel to be the safest pick of a team that we will see in the state championship game. And I believe probably a team that the way the coverage goes might actually be a team that we wind up seeing a lot. Of, of course, we'll see Muskegon, Mona Shores kind of as our primary, I think, come playoff time based on what's going on. Um, I'm going to pick West Catholic. Okay. I think I think they are... You look at the main thing is there's so many teams that I think can beat each other um, around the area, like in Division Two and, and whatever else. I think they they to me f- feel like the team. I feel the most confident. I like their t- I like both of their quarterbacks. Landon Groves talks so highly about their offensive line that I really like that. And if they if they look like that West Catholic team, just ran rough shot on everyone a couple years ago. Why did the camera move? <laughs> Just really loves what you've got to say right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping this in. Seriously. Oh, it's on like, it's tracking for some reason. Nope. Okay. Don't do now that. we'll go back. Okay. This is staying in. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how it's staying in, but it's going to stay in some capacity. Now it's all messed up. All right, back. All right. Uh, West Cat. So yeah, I think West Catholic is if they look like that team that ran like crazy the other year. I think that's mm-hmm. what they're uh, what they're going to be. Coach of the year, Mr. Timmer. Who you have? Well, the <clears throat> the easy pick would be to go the head coach of the team that I picked to be the area. But uh, I don't think that's the right pick because I think it has to be someone who elevates his team. Yeah, that's where we're going to go uh, a slightly different route here. And so I'm going to go. Coach Danny Brown, uh, okay. South Christian. I that think. would fly a little bit in the face of some of my thoughts then if they kind of are the impressive of the Christian schools from there. Although, the wait, they're a different division. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, no, I th- I think, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, they've had, what, uh, tremendous success the last couple seasons, made it yeah. the state title game, bring back Carson Viss, as we talked about. I think this is kind of the year where uh, you could see Carson Viss, of course, at his best. Yeah. They're replacing a lot of guys, and I think maybe this that, is where we see some of that coaching that uh, they can replace those guys. If they can make another run, win a conference, win some playoff games, I think you're looking at a really impressive run. Well, the interesting thing about, I'm not changing my pick, but the interesting thing about them, so I did not pick them to win the conference, although I think it's like 51 for Like, I, I think it's a two or three horse race. Even there, I just wanted to make the pick you didn't make a little bit. <laughs> um, like, they could lose, they lose that conference to FHC or Zealand West, both bigger schools than them. Or even, you know, Unity then gets more interesting. This, but them winning a state championship after not winning the conference is certainly on the Possible. table. Possible, yeah. Like, definitely. I mean, especially because, like, I think Division Four is going to be a little bit weaker this year. There, there's not... I mean, Harper Woods is likely waiting for them at the end, but Harper Woods doesn't have Jacob Odin this mm-hmm. year in the secondary, which we can we can talk about who won the matchup <laughs> between him and Vermont right. last year in that game. As a Grand Valley alum on one hand, I love it on a Michigan fan on the other hand. <laughs> yeah, it's conflicting there. I don't love it quite <laughs> as much. Um, but... Uh, but no, that's um, that's a good pick. I'm going back to my, if you go back to my OK Green thing, if Mona Shores wins that conference, it has to be Koziak, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's what I'm going to stick okay. with is if Matt Koziak. Now, the other X factor that I think both of us may fall in line with, and that it could wind up being a sweep of these three. We'll talk, I'm going to talk about this point at the end. Okay. So we'll, we'll <clears> save that for just a second because I have an interesting theory that I think of something that could happen. Player of the year. You going to say it? <laughs> 
It wouldn't, it wouldn't be an MGM show. We, <laughs> we are created to be his hype man. The best running back in the state of Michigan, if he stays healthy, is at Granville. Mm-hmm. He's going to run the ball a lot. I mean, he was our player of the year last year when he was a sophomore. I think he'll be better this year. Jaden Terry. Yep. Do you have any other thoughts? No, I think okay. uh, I did. Uh, I mean, Carson Viss. I, I, that like, was my other nomination that yep. I think I just talked about as head coach, and I think we talked about earlier, too, the potential there for some big numbers. But I think when you look at a, a guy that's got the, the hype really going of the next level, he's got the offers, everything, the numbers. Uh, I think we're looking at another special year from Jaden Terry. So here's my theory. If Muskegon wins the state championship this year, they need to win all three because they win the championship yeah. in D2. They bring in James Young. He probably is the best player then. Yeah. And then the coaching staff said, we're going to bring in this passing quarterback or however he looks, even, or if they coach him up to to fit the system. Like, then Coach Fairfield has brought this guy in to, like, change, maybe change his offense or change this outside quarterback, and they win. So that's my little thing. My change to it is, like, if – if Muskegon wins a state championship or gets really close to winning a state championship, you know, if D. LaSalle beats him in the state title, mm-hmm. odds are we're doing the same game, by the way. <laughs> Come November, there's a good chance you see Chandler and I sitting in the same booth doing the same game at the end of the yep. year this year like we did last year. Um, then I think they might sweep all three. Yeah. Just because like that's such a unique... Again, it's like, what are they going to look like? There's no, like the thing about Muskegon always is... It doesn't matter who the talent is on the team. We know exactly what they're going to be. Mm-hmm. And we don't know what they're going to be this year at all. They might just be what they always look like, but also, like, probably not. Like, I don't – they they don't have a four four forty type quarterback this yeah. year that's going to do that, and it's going to be, like, Makai guy chopping his feet and, you know, racing by people. Like, that's not what James Young is, I don't no. think, unless, unless he's quicker than we all think he is, and North Muskegon didn't have him – playing that style and they think he can but i think i've seen him throwing quite a bit early so i don't know it's fascinating the whole area is fascinating it is we don't the conferences are if nothing else the okay did a good job teams have got to travel 80 minutes to get to half the games but like (laughs) they're going to be competitive yeah i mean like they had the guts to say we're going to put these big like holland type schools in the silver we're going to mix things around we're going to we're going to have the guts to move byron center over to muskegon just for you know what's and grins like i don't know it's going to be fascinating and we start in ohio with Michigan game night, because of course, 5.30 p.m. on the air, Friday night, from Pickerington North, Radio Plus coverage, because I don't think they have a huddle cam, so it's Radio Plus, again, we're recording this way early, but Radio Plus coverage, we'll be there, we'll be talking about it, we'll have some stuff along the way, it'll be a great game, Mm -hmm. we'll have every week, we're going to be back here doing two shows, some weeks might only be one show because we aren't doing a second game, so we probably won't do a second show, but maybe we will. Maybe we'll have something to talk about. Yeah. Maybe I'll have something to complain about. Maybe <laughs> maybe. maybe this show is just going to be me telling Chandler that he can leave early because i got to talk. <laughs> maybe that's what it's got to be. Maybe. Maybe this is going to be the Nate Dreyer show. <laughs> like, think of all those shows out there that they just guys get to talk. Yeah, a lot of people just... watch Joel Klatt talk about football on his podcast. True. Colin Cowher, all these people. Maybe we need that. The people, the people yearn for me just talking. Yes. <laughs> That's the number one thing I hear. More. Because, Nate, we just want you to talk. And as long as you're saying something stupid, we want you saying more. This has been Behind the Call. Football is back. We'll see you all Friday night from Pickerington, Ohio. We're making the trip so you don't have to. If you want to, maybe still tune in. But if you don't want to, please tune in for sure. We'll see you then. Goodbye.